cord. Hey everyone, it's January 17th. You're here at Chaos Community Weekly Hangout, Weekly Meeting. Um, welcome everybody. Good to see everyone here. Here's the minutes for anybody who just joined. And if you can answer that question of would you go skydiving? Absolutely not. Un under no circumstances would I do that. No, not one. Even if the plane was going down, nope, absolutely not. I see some maybes though. You, you would. I'm, yeah, I'm having a hard time. Going down? I mean, maybe. I would have to really be in that situation, I think. I don't so. know if it's called skydiving at that point. Oh. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. You are diving from the sky, regardless if you have a parachute or not at that point, you're right. Georg, you have? You've done it? You've gone sky? Oh my gosh. How was it? It was my sister who said she was going to go skydiving with her friends while she was in California and I was visiting her and I said, yeah, I'll come to the airport with you. I get there and I get signed up and I jump out of the airplane. It was pretty, pretty cool. Oh my gosh. No I, way. I didn't know that about, were you attached to somebody? Yeah, it was a tandem jump. Amazing. So I was strapped to their chest and I just followed the instructions and they, they said, jump. So we jumped. And then we fell and falling for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so before the parachute opens. It's like it takes all the breath out of you. Just ooh. Uh, very similar to, to um, in the amusement parks, some have these really tall towers where they pull you up and then they let you drop. But that's only for five seconds or two. And then you do that for 30 seconds. Longest 30 seconds ever. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that sounds worse all of a sudden. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Anita's down for it. Sophia's done it too. Wow. We have some daredevils in our group. I know me. I have personality traits that would make it dangerous for me to perform that kind of activity. <laughs> What, listening to instructions? No. <laughs> that would be me. I'd be like, wait, what? I missed what you said. <laughs> like daydreaming, like we're forgetting to pull the cord. Yeah. And just enjoying the ride. He's <laughs> getting distracted. They, I would be. They don't let you go solo for a long time. So you're not really worried about like, that's kind of like Gary's experience. You're just like strapped to very closely to a new stranger friend and <laughs> It takes it removes a lot of the anxiety because you can't really do anything wrong. You're just kind of there. Oh, yeah. Well, then maybe under those circumstances, I might try it after my children are through college. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I like the ground way too much. I love the ground. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, the first thing is I just wanted to let everybody know I did archive the minutes here. So if you open up this, you can see um, I didn't delete them. <laughs> we don't delete them. Um, just archived them. And if you're in working groups and you feel like the, you know, the meeting minutes are getting full, the document's getting long. If somebody wants to do that, it's awesome. Um, they can connect with me, and I can help sort that out of that process. It's not that hard. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to let everyone know that. That looks like a really actually smart way to do this. Yeah, because otherwise, because since we have this is a weekly meeting too, so and we have like images and stuff that get dropped in the minutes sometimes. So this document just is huge. <laughs> if we don't, and it, it will take forever to load, and it's just unwieldy. So yeah. Um, the next item on the list is this chaos onboarding team, which came up as an idea in the DEI working group back in November. Um, and we kind of over the break built this out a little bit. Um, we brought it up at the last DEI working group mm -hmm. meeting um, as something that we might kick off. So if this is something, so basically this team would be um, a group of folks that um, someone new to the project can request like a buddy or a guide or something like that. It's like a one on one um, kind of interaction that where that person would just kind of help them figure out what to do, maybe be that point person if there's any questions or um, you know, all of those kind of newcomer anxiety kind of 
fears or questions that you have when you just don't really know what to do and where to go. Um, it, this would kind of be like, like Ruth and I and Shoya kind of fill that role right now. Um, but it would just be like a, a group of more people like that so that it wouldn't just be, you know, one person that you could go to, but a group of folks. Um, so the idea is that they would, um, <clears throat> the newcomer would maybe request, uh, put a request in, and then someone from the group could pick up that request maybe in the same time zone, something like that also would be helpful. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's not meant to be just as a, a just a clear, it's not meant to be like a mentorship thing. It's not a long term thing. It's not like helping them learn how to code or solving any of those problems. Um, just uh, more of like, I'm your friendly face, you know, come come see me if you have questions and I can help you figure out how to get the answers that you need. We did have some ideas for names. This is obviously in the very early planning stages of this this group, um, but just wanted to bring it up here for any comments or questions and just to point people here that this is something that we're working on. These are the folks that are interested right now. If you are interested in being on that team, please feel free to add your name. I'll share this doc too in the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody did it already? Yeah, okay. So my um, one comment and one question, my perpetual question on stuff like this, which is just scale. Like, how do we, you know what I'm talking about? Like if we have the number of newcomers, all of them ask, yes, I would like to have a one-on-one -on -one guide. Like worst case scenario, I mean, good scenario, but the highest volume scenario, have you thought about that? Yeah, and I think that's why we wanted to build this team out um, just to kind of test the waters and see um knowing that we are kind of scaling back maybe our mentorship stuff this year yeah. um also will kind of help with that i think because that's where we get the influx i think is when the mentorship groups come around um if we do get you know like 50 people <laughs> that, want, that want that um interaction then we'll have to maybe relook at how we do this i think um but I feel, yeah. yeah i feel like this group is actually meant to help with scale because like Ruth and Shoya and I are just, you know, individual, like three people. I got but if we have a team of like 15 and then that's kind of helping with that, if that, okay. if that makes sense. And then with the, um, maybe the easiest way to connect is through like DMs on Slack, maybe? That's what we were thinking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there might be like a form or something that folks fill out to request, a, a you know, a guide or whatever we end up calling. Um, and then from there, then that person could like reach out straight on Slack and just kind of continue things there, I think is probably if, the easiest. What if we put it in the newbie bot? The newbie bot? Yeah, that might say, you know, if you're interested, just a thought, I mean, maybe it, it's not the best place, but if you're interested, here are some people who would be willing to you know, be a navigator, a concierge, whatever yeah. the term is. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's really accessible. Um, on DM, something like that. Yeah, we were thinking um, the only question I would have on that is it might be easier for the navigators to opt in. Yeah, my right. So we kind of balance it out a little more and people can Right, so not what everybody's just going to you kind of thing. Right, yeah, 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 just because I'm like, maybe right. people know me more or something, but yeah. Okay, yep, no, that's good. The other thing I wanted to ask about this is, um, so we have talked in the past about our contributor funnel and the path to contributions and like these kind of buckets of folks that we have. Um, exploring is the first one where you just literally are brand new to the community and you're just kind of feeling things out. And participating is where you would actually come to maybe a meeting or um, something like that. And then contributing is where you're actually like sending in a PR or some other like more heavy, heavy handed contribution. And then I forget what the fourth one is, but if anyone remembers, maybe leader or something. I don't remember. Anyway, um, I think this would help newcomers move from exploring to participating. But if we, it might also make sense to do it from participating. So they've come to a meeting, maybe they've know a little bit more about chaos. They've come to an office hours. They know about the working groups. And now is it like going to be a little more of like, okay, now I figure, help me figure out how I can 
can actually contribute something meaningful to this project because um, I've kind of done all of this stuff and now I'm kind of in that participating phase. So what do we see this group being? Exploring to participating or participating to contributing? Well, when people first come to us, I think it's exploring to participating. Um, and I think there's, there's, I think there's probably also some mentoring and um, navigation help required to go from participating to contributing. I think if you've never made a pull request on a metric definition or something like that, I think the first time it's, it's perhaps a little daunting. Um, and so we could offer like, and so like one of the things, there's this um, thing that we learned in DEI, I, it's a uh, newcomers only like issues. So if we created an issue to build a metric or update a metric and tagged at newcomers only that those could be a um, participating to contributing function path. It's just an idea um, that I picked up from some of our other conversations. Yeah, I like that idea. So this, so this group of like tour guides, however, whatever we end up calling it, would kind of just help those who are super brand new kind of figure out where they want to go. Because I, I do do some of that in the office hours um, and with the, um, with the onboarding call, but um, do you think that would be a good role for, like, I, to, to be fair, I don't, I don't have any strong feelings either way, <laughs> or, or if we want to insert this team in a, like a little further along the process, I guess, is my question. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I think when people, I think when people are most lost when they first like come to chaos and what is it and how do I start? Right. So the, the absolute, not the absolute newcomer to participating is, I, I think probably the biggest obstacle. Okay. I mean, we can't, nobody can go from participating to contributing without passing through that first gate, right? True. So maybe okay. we should focus there. Okay. I don't know what other people can. Yeah. yeah, my thoughts when you were talking about it, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. like just producing it, my thoughts were like my, at least in my mind, my responses were like, here are some meetings that you can attend. Here, here's where that documentation is. Here are some of the, it's kind of like Sean was saying, from the newcomers into that exploring slash participating. Okay, perfect. Yep. Okay, so what we're thinking as uh, for next steps is to have a uh, maybe like a, I hate to add another meeting <laughs> to the calendar, but uh, maybe just some way to connect these folks uh, so we can um, really take it in and implement it and figure out. Um, you know how it will run and um how we want to so like we would want to do some kind of maybe training for folks just to make sure that you know they i don't know feel okay with the process and you know what i'm saying like like for the what i'm trying to say is for like the badgers we have kind of a an initiation orientation for that group just to kind of make sure everybody knows all the moving parts and that you know they all feel comfortable with jumping in and doing a badge. So there would maybe be like an onboarding meeting for all of these interested folks to just make sure everybody feels comfortable with the process and yeah, know. That's fine. You know. Yeah. Okay. But Elizabeth, okay. that's all what onboarding is about, right? You have it at different level. You have onboarding at a task level, fresh from the organizational level, the working group level and task level. So the work, the onboarding team should handle those uh, concerns. And there are quite of uh, things that have been done in open source communities and the literature that guides this kind of uh, discussion. Yes, yes. Good point, Armstrong. So I'm going to put a thing in here. Next steps. Oops. Schedule. Um, group meeting with interested chaotic to um, finalize implementation, etc. Okay. 
So I will get with that group and we'll do something else on the side. I'll find a day that works for everybody is what I'm trying to say. Okay, any other final questions, comments, thoughts on this? All right. So um, kind of a nice segue into um, the next onboarding meeting, which is um, more of a formal presentation, I would say, than just like our open office hours, which are just open and they're just chit chats um, for people who have questions. This onboarding session, we run the first Monday, first Wednesday, sorry, first Wednesday of the month. Ruth and I run these. Um, and it is like a more formal presentation of like, here's what chaos is, here's all the different pieces, the different moving parts. So we really recommend anybody who's new to chaos to come to that meeting and really get that kind of um, foundational information so they have a better understanding of how chaos works because we are a little different. Um, we're a little unique, I would say, uh, as an open source project. So the next one of that is um, February 1st at 11 a.m. U.S. Central Chicago time. And that should be on the chaos calendar as well. Does anyone have questions on that? Pretty straightforward, okay. Uh, let's see here. The next says website URL for metrics. I'm not sure who put that on there. I put that on there because there was a discussion in, this, uh, in Slack about changing the URLs for metrics away from readable URLs to numeric URLs and the implication that has for search engine optimization and other things. So I just wanted to see if there were any new thoughts, any updates. I will defer to Sean. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not in charge of deciding that. I, I think Consistency and stability are the only concerns, whether they're numeric or alphabetical isn't the critical point. In my view, it's the consistency. So, so, so that if tools the, are pointing to metrics, they, that, that URL has some stability. That's, that's the dream that I have. Yeah, just reading the conversation, I don't think we can have all the things in all the scenarios so whether it's like most optimal for search engines or um making their human readable or having like guaranteed stability it just doesn't seem like there's one solution that solves all the things mm -hmm. i'm just reading the conversation i really wasn't part of it um also from reading the conversation it seems like there's a lean towards human readable in terms of the the metrics, but that will in just inherently have some instability because if a metric name does change, then the URL is going to change with it. And I think in WordPress you can have you can have links that don't ever change that you can use that aren't necessarily the ones that people would see by default. Perfect. But so I don't we, know exactly how that works in WordPress. So then we could keep the metrics human read, like the the .html human readable, and just handle that stability inside of WordPress. It sounded like we could. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a related question. Who is in charge of the website right now? Elizabeth. Okay. Because Kevin mentioned that he wasn't, and I I wasn't sure who was, um, and I just I just like to know. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, and that's like a recent thing over the break. Um, Kevin's stepping back a little bit to work on some other things. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm taking that over for him. So yeah, feel free to tag me in anything. If you see anything broken or not working right, images, whatever, just feel free to tag me. Totally fine. Cool. I'll stop tagging Kevin every time I need something on the website. Yeah, okay. it's, it's a recent. Elizabeth instead. <laughs> it's a recent thing, so no worries at all. No worries oh, at all. Thanks. And Kevin's still around. Like he'll, I'm sure, you know, be happy to help out with whatever is needed. So, um, so uh, WordPress permalinks can keep stable links and also human readable links. So the way that I understand WordPress is every page has an internal ID with which it's referenced in the database. And 
we can ask WordPress to show us a page with that specific ID, and then it will replace the URL with the human readable name that we have. And what we can use that unique ID, which will not change even if we change the name and the human readable URL, uh, we can put, we would have to put that on the page as the unchanging link that Sean can use. But then we have the human readable URL that changes when the metric name changes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's not the one that you would use, Sean. Would that? No, I would use the the stable URL. And maybe Elizabeth, it sounds like um, probably it might be most efficient if you and I sat down and on a Zoom call together and just tried to figure out what exactly this feature, how this feature works because I have not, I have not done that before. So I don't, I don't have a, any frame of reference for what that is. I believe it, I just haven't done it. And I doubt you have. <laughs> I, I haven't um, done a ton with it, but I, I, I know enough about it that we can poke around and see right. how we can get you that, because I think the breakdown would be that you don't have access to the internal ID that the WordPress is using. So if we can get you that access to put in Augur, then we're good. And like yeah. how that gets updated, like where that gets stored for, for I, you. To have it. I, yeah, I have, I have admin access on the website. So if I can, if okay. I can figure out where that lives and we can probably figure out how to get them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So I'm going to put here action item Elizabeth and Sean to connect to um, research how this could work for Augur. Okay. Yeah, that's and right. Think and there. I think it's not just Augur, it's like anybody that wants to link to our metrics, which And let me know if I can help speed up that search. And Sean and they <laughs> Yeah, you if go. you know how to do that, Georg, then you can speed it up for sure. Yeah. Is that what, Georg, do you know, is that what, how Grimoire Lab references those links or? No, uh, okay. we don't. I, I'm sure our links might be broken. Also, okay. The names change. So yeah, so this is something that would be helpful to everybody, anybody, so, not just water, but anybody, yeah. Yeah, uh, I can add my two cents. So I have found a utility that can look at all the links in the website that are broken and give you a summary of the links. I have been working for some other community and found a utility. So I can test run on the chaos and I can even create an issue for all the broken links that needs to be fixed. Okay, that would be, be good. A, yeah, it'll be a very handy. So yeah, I'll I'll add it to my to-do list. I'll go through the Chaos website and find out all the broken links and share the report so that these can be fixed in the process. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Fanat. That's really awesome. I think the other thing we might want to do is when we when we create a new metric, um, is display that permalink at the top of every metric page. Because that way, nobody needs that. Because otherwise, we're going to have multiple people digging through WordPress trying to find the permalinks for, for the software. And if we have it displayed right on the metrics page, that'll make it easy for anybody who needs to link to it to use a, a permanent link instead of a human readable one. But uh, to your point on how we get to know what will be the permanent link as we are developing the metric because that that will come through WordPress or we have to decide our own link. We we won't I think we won't know that until it gets posted Post on mm -hmm. on WordPress. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Let's let's say that. Yeah. I suspect that yes. we, you're right. We won't have that when we develop the metric. I think somebody's going to have to add it later is my guess. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can add it to do this like as we have a checklist okay uh, generating the link through WordPress and adding it to the document can be a part of that checklist and to help that process, yeah. yeah. I added an example in the chat. So page ID 2977 is the bus factor. And if you type that in the URL, it will resolve to the bus factor. Yeah, I'll copy this.
So, um, what, Don, your idea was then to actually post. Oh, no, that's not the right link. To actually post that. Um, that link that like Georg just put in the chat to put that in the metric itself as like, this is a, here's the permanent link to this metric. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that way, anybody, not just our software, but people who are writing blog posts or doing other things can link to yeah. a better link. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks everybody. Any, uh, we're almost out of time here because we're going to, so for those, is there anybody on here who's new to chaos, maybe? Um, what we have been doing uh, for these meetings, um, just chopping them off early so that we have a little bit of time at the end of this to talk about chaos con planning. Um, so I'm just going to wrap this up in like the next few minutes. I'm so sorry we didn't get through everything um, today. Um, we do have uh, just a quick update on the discourse. We are going to start actively, hopefully using this in February, at least testing it out. If it doesn't work for our community, that's totally fine. We're just going to experiment with it and see if it's something that that um, gets picked up uh, by the community is as a replacement to the mailing list, which is very low um, engagement right now. Um, there are some docs here. If this is something that you're interested in, great, awesome. Uh, check out our initial badges here of what we're looking at doing to start off with and some initial docs that we're looking at. Um, there is a moderation guide that's being worked on right now. So um, again, if this is something that's interesting to you and you really like this stuff, then have at it. <laughs> go in these issues and put your comments in. Um, but we'll go ahead and quickly move along. Um, Georg had a quick idea, not quick idea, he had an idea that we have a few minutes to talk about quickly, um, which was to create this chaos ambassadors, um, which would be similar to those two things. Georg, do you wanna take a couple minutes and talk about that? Real quick, uh, the idea is to, as the chaos community is growing and growing and growing, to recognize those that are active in the community, provide them with tools and messaging and resources to spread the word and be ambassador for the chaos project. and to create a certain status that comes with or with being an active advocate for the chaos community. And this is something that other communities have done where you can become uh, an advocate, an ambassador, a hero, uh, whatever title we want to give these people. Um, and it's a nice thing that someone can add to their resume, it is also uh, like a, I don't know, I don't want to call it a secret club or something that you can join and get into. But the that um, that you know you're feeling that you're being embraced by the chaos community even more, and now you have access to additional tools and whatnot that will help you be the best chaotic that you can be. Looks like we have some really good support in chat for that. Um, I also am 1000% behind it. I think it's a fantastic idea. I would really love to see us do that. Um, I don't know uh, what the next steps might be. Maybe um, to start a doc where we kind of start outlining what would be involved and how we want to build that out. I think a few things we need is criteria for what does it mean to become a chaos hero or chaos ambassador? What are the things that it entitles someone to? So does it give them a badge, a certain title, a link and entry? Um, and then what resources do we provide? So as someone who reaches that status and what they're recommended or um, indoctrinated, I, I don't know, I'm using all kinds of weird words here, uh, then what resources do we provide uh, that they can use to continue their work for chaos? So I think those three things would make up a ambassador program like that. 
there might be more. And what kind of rewards do we give them for, for doing this, I think is part, partly implied in some of your questions, but the CNCF has done some really creative things with this. They, they gave the CNCF ambassadors capes one year, like wow. branded, branded wow. capes. So you can do like some pretty, you know, like, like these things become coveted items. So I think we could get oh, kind of capes. creative with this. Capes, like super. Yeah, perfect. not capes. Like superhero capes. I'd rather have the yeah. cape. That's just me. Captain okay. America or whatever. <laughs> That's great. That's really great. I love that. Um, Georg, I don't know. I'm not going to, you know, push this back on you, but do you want to start a doc? If you don't, I'm happy to. Well, I, I don't want to start that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm will... also fine with having that conversation at ChaosCon. Awesome. Okay. I'll, I'll just put something down so that there's a central place to kind of keep those notes together and they're not buried in our meeting minutes here, um, if that's okay. And then y'all can reference that at ChaosCon if we want to build it, you know, work on it there. Um, okay, so um, community manager working group. Who put this one on here? Well, I did. It was just a thought that came to my mind in the last like hour. So we have um, we had the, the OSPO working group and we had 20 some people that showed up to that meeting. So there's a real interest. We also just had a newcomer meeting. And I've heard this several times that community managers would also have a keen interest in chaos metrics and chaos tools and kind of why don't we ever have a group of community managers that can come together and talk through the metrics that are important for them. And so just kind of based on, I think, the interest in the OSPO working group, I thought maybe we should think about a community manager working group as well. Yeah, I really love that idea, actually. Because um, we have had, as Matt said, a few community managers that come in like office hours and such, and there really isn't a, a central place right now where that those conversations happen. So it would be great if, if chaos could be that, fill that hole and, and be that, that place. Community, so building a working, it would be a new working group, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hesitate to make an observation of a trend at two versus a one, if one's the one version of thing and now two versions of things, but with this, a community manager working group and the OSPO working group, it almost seems like maybe we're sort of shifting how we organize. I mean, we've talked about this before in terms of how the website and the metrics are organized, but also how we meet and work on problems. And now that we have a baseline set of metrics, now we're, and we're thinking more about metrics models and implementation strategy of multiple metrics, then it kind of makes sense to have more working groups that are functionally focused. <laughs> Um, because I think they're the best aligned to also say not just the new metric, but like also what are the metrics that are most helpful for these particular users, which is kind of coming out in at least the very first conversation of the OSPO working group. But um, it, it does seem like that might be a natural evolution for us as an organization. Um, this sort of like a broad, I just wanted to plan it now and see if this is coming up more in other working groups. I'd be curious to hear how, how that might progress. I'd be curious too. <laughs> I agree. And I think you said it really well, Sophia. Okay, and so since our time is a little short today, um, let's bring this back up again next week. Is that okay with everybody? We can kind of think about it a little and bring it up next week. Yep. Awesome. And while you're typing, just if anybody cares, these are the from the OSPO working group. This was kind of some of the how I kind of brought together the ideas that came about as to things to work on in the year of 2023. This was just a really quick from the notes we had. Um, so you can take a look, but we can talk about it later too. And I'll share this in the to do OSPO channel and all that kind of stuff and the chaos OSPO channel. Yeah, that was a really interesting meeting that OSPO working group. It was great. Yes. Okay, so I think it's unless one, any, oh, go ahead. Okay, I looked, I looked at our place where we get t shirts and they don't have capes. No capes. What about cakes, though? There you go. I look for cakes, but no, no. Cakes. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm stopped sharing. Um, does anybody have any final things to talk about before we adjourn today? No? All right, I will stop recording.